This also, uh, and this is sort of a, a, a sidelight a little bit, but uh, of the Howard Schultz thing, but it is so indicative uh, of what is wrong with our politics. I mean, it's funny, like you get a guy like Howard Schultz who comes in and he's doing this because our politics are broken. Our politics are broken. Our people, it's like it's so polarized. And it's bro- to the extent that you can say our politics are broken. It is not because people disagree. All right. That's perfectly uh, legitimate and healthy. I mean, that's why you have politics, right, is to resolve these disagreements in a way that doesn't end up with people beating each other up or shooting each other. But to the extent that our politics are broken, Howard Schultz, it's almost as if he's doing just like it's, it's a performance art. Like, I'm not going to tell you that our politics are broken, I'm going to show you. And one of the ways is, I'm going to, uh, the idea that A, I can be on 60 Minutes, The View, every cable channel, NPR, uh, every possible outlet that exists. And why am I on these things? Talking about that I'm actually contemplating. I've I've had a thought that I'm thinking about being president. That's one reason why our politics are broken, because someone can buy themselves into relevance that way for 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 nothing, for having a decent pun on his book from the ground up. What's going to save America? Really calling it a decent pun these days. huh? Well, all puns are bad, but (laughs) but uh, where was the law and order uh, gavel for that? A.P.A.B. Oh, forget it. But All Bill, puns are bad. Uh, but Bill Burton, former um, Obama official, he was in, like a communications guy, right? I think this is he's basically coming on there to explain why our politics are broken. Now, he's not going to say that. This is the subtext of everything he's saying, because a billionaire came to him or a billionaire was looking like that. Like, I, I think I'm going to run for president. Who can I talk to? Who should I talk to? And he talks to some friends and they're like, oh, well, we have a consultant for you, Bill Burton. He worked for uh, President Obama. And Bill Burton's job, when he shows up at that door, for the time that they sat down and had a drink, right, whatever it was, whatever, with a plaza club or some some club or coffee, coffee. they had coffee, Uh, or whatever it was, you know, at the top of the the, uh, Seattle uh, needle or, or, you know, like uh, floating above, you know, 40 feet on the the sound of wherever, wherever it was that they met. Right. For that first meeting in a spaceship. Right. In a spaceship. (laughs) Wherever nobody knows about. Like uh, I'm going to fly you to the, um, you know, to uh, some uh, Caribbean island or uh, to have a meeting for, you know, a, a lunch meeting wherever they met. Bill Burton's number one job when he walked through that door was convince this guy that he can do it so that I can get paid. Is it, it's like the animated, like Looney Tunes, literally like the cha-ching, 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 right. cha-ching, just right. like the cash register. He's just like, I'm, how am I going to separate this guy from his money? And then one of the, and after the disastrous rollout that Bill Burton probably had a hand in Along advising, with Steve right? Steve Schmidt. Yeah, whatever. The other guy taking advantage He's, of this poor idiot Howard Schultz. So not only do we get Howard Schultz is on every television show, some dude working for him. What's my job? I am an assistant to the guy thinking about running for president. He gets on uh, Meet the Press daily. And basically is doing an advertisement for his own continued paycheck. That's what this is. President Barack Obama and now an advisor to Howard Schultz, Mr. Burton. Welcome back to the show, sir. Thanks, Chuck. Good to talk to you. Well, let me start with what probably every one of your former colleagues is asking. Number one, are you still a Democrat? And number two, why are you doing this? Uh, I am a Democrat. Been a Democrat my whole life and I'm going to continue to be one. I'm doing it because I think Howard's a great guy. And I think that he... uh, (laughs) He, he loves his family. He loves his country. He wants to make America Positive. a better place. Okay. The guy is running for president, supposedly, or thinking about it. And everyone knows this will throw the election, uh, perhaps, to, uh, to Trump, maybe. And why is he doing it? Because he's a great guy. He loves his family. 
Oh, and then somewhere around the line. Oh, and he's doing it for America, too. I forgot about that. He wants to make America a better place. And I think that being with him on this journey as he figures out whether or not he ought to run for president is pretty exciting. And I will tell you that one of the things that's so great about it, and I've been in politics for a long time, as you can tell from the gray hair on my head. The thing that's so cool about it is that it's Democrats, it's Republicans, there's people who are formerly in the military, former journalists. It's a diversity of people that I've never experienced in politics. And for us to come together and work on this together has been a really amazing experience. Obviously, you know the way Twitter works and social media. There's a certain op-ed you wrote in 2016 for the Sacramento Bee that's been making the rounds. Let me put up a piece of it. If Steiner, Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson, eat into Clinton's support even a little, that could matter in a close election. And in the same way, I would bet that Ralph Nader, or at least many of his supporters, wishes that he didn't help to make George W. Bush our 43rd commander-in-chief. I suppose Stein supporters would not want to be in the position of explaining to their kids how they helped make Trump president. Why should you not eat those words today? A couple of things. Number one, uh, Howard Schultz is not Jill Stein. Jill Stein was in that race because she thought that the two parties were too close together. The two candidates were too close together. What Howard Schultz thinks is that the, two, the, the polar opposites of the parties are so far apart, but the American people are close together. And maybe what we need is a choice for the American people uh, to choose something different, a different path, a, a different oh kind of outcome. Oh, my God. Pause it for a second. That is so beautiful. I hope he's making so much money. I got to say, though, a little, a little message from Obama, like, more people than you ever met in politics compared to the 2008 presidential campaign I ran. Fuck you. I, I, I just I think that when that guy came up with that formulation, that he was so proud of himself, honestly. And, and like I would be, too. Like I would be like, oh, that's a good spin. I, I, well, I, would, I, would, like, walk I mean, down it's transparent. Like, it's would, obvious. But does it's this, good this, I mean, how how much bullshit does this sound that like? Was and somebody close to him goes, it sounds like bullshit, but it's actually pretty polished That was bullshit. the spin equivalent of the guy of like OJ's lawyers did create reasonable doubt, right? Like if you look at that case, it's like he obviously did it, but they were able to create some measure of reasonable doubt. Like, but this that is, was that was a this pure is bullshit. Such, but good this bullshit. is like the stuff that is like this is why Howard's paying. Well, me. I think it's 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 true. I think in a certain limited sense that I think Jill Stein was wrong in saying the parties were the same. I think it's true that the people are closer generally than the right. parties are. But the part the reason the parties are so polarized is because of oligarchy. Right. Well, the other thing is that's not the question. The premise that he set up in his uh, op-ed had nothing to do with what their perspective were on the parties. Uh, obviously, um, uh, you know, Gary Johnson and Jill Stein, they are not draw drawing from the same well necessarily. The whole point was I mean, you're siphoning together, off votes. You're siphoning off votes from Clinton, therefore you are, and, and so it's the exact same situation, whatever Howard Schultz believes about where the parties are and where the American people are and whatever that, that diagram he's drawn. It's not worth doing a segment on, but apparently uh, some, some informants have told me that Jill Stein will be on Fox tonight to talk yeah. about oh third boy. party runs. Right. So I, I mean, you know, there is like also just one line of really dumb thinking in America that there's something innately magical about any third party effort. Let's listen. Half a, a different kind of outcome, a different kind of politics in America. And secondly, I just think that he, first of all, hasn't made the decision to run. But if notes. he did, I, I, I think we can agree that would, it would be a more serious uh, effort than what Jill Stein put together. Oh, positive. Well, in other words, it's going to be even more assuredly throw the election to Trump. It's going to be so, even so, more like, damaging. There's some debate. You could say you could say Jill Stein, you know, uh, uh, strictly in terms of numbers may have, uh, you know, had those votes. But we can't say seriously that she seriously drew support from Hillary Clinton. We'll be able to say that this time. Yeah, he's arguing against his own, own point. Premise. It's ridiculous. Yes. Like, it's fun to watch these people spin their wheels and make fun of them. But like, if Bernie is the nominee, there will be a much more serious third party spoiler candidate and uh, like when that comes along we need to remember this person does not get to portray themselves as a centrist they do not get to portray themselves as a moderate um whether they're doing it for their own personal grift or what the outcome is that trump will 
be president still, and that is the outcome that the ruling class wants. Well, it, fair enough, and we still don't know how much help Jill Stein had from outside actors, um, what? given given where she spent December of 2015. But let me ask you this. <laughs> oh my God. He obviously, you're using this book tour to launch an, ex, uh, an exploratory bid as well as any book tour launch. Was it? I wonder if Howard bid. Schultz ever been to Russia. That's what I want to know. God darn it. What's going on with the board? I don't know. Something's wrong with the, the thing. It's an old yeah, uh, meeting with Howard yeah. Schultz. Any book yes. tour launch for a presidential bid, uh, as I've seen in a while. So it's clear you want this to be the front. Why? What's his, what I'm trying to figure out is I don't understand why he wants to run other than he's not them and not them. What is the big idea beyond not a Republican and not a Democrat? Well, the book tour, he, loves his dad, he his wrote kid, the book, uh, whether he, he was going to think about this or not, because right. he has a story to tell and he wanted uh, to get it out there. You know, he's a guy who grew up in the projects and was self-made. He, he worked his way through college. He went on to, to build a great company that did the right thing by the folks who worked for it. And uh, now he just he wants to Jack continue Andrews. to serve. In terms of what his big idea is, it's that politics is broken and maybe we need uh, a solution to it that risks the imagination of a new kind of possibility. Circle. Maybe what has he done? Does this come, right? The politics are broken. I'm up here. I have uh, taken everything I learned from uh, the Obama administration, and I am just selling it out in such a way to make this guy a figure who with no agenda other than the fact that politics are broken, and I sitting here being paid the tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to make it seem like this guy actually has a chance to do anything other than perhaps uh, elect Donald Trump. The, it is the ultimate. It's just so much cynicism. It's so layered on top mm. of itself. It is like it is. It, it literally is like a parfait of cynicism, <laughs> just just slightly different gradations of different product that we can look at and just it, it, it's exquisite. And as you Bill can Burton see, there's doing. a huge amount of skepticism in new and independent media about your candidacy. And, you know, Howard, if you want a little bit of consultation on how to leverage and let me just make it clear. communication. Bill Burton's and, not the guy for you. Yeah, I'm the guy. Yeah. For you. That, well, I'm the guy for you or maybe potentially is there any more of, of this uh, well let's just play a little bit more because he says uh, he says the phrase risk the imagination of a new possibility that was good. You. that's what I oh, he just he wants to continue to serve in terms of what his serve? big idea is continue it's that coffee politics is broken and maybe we need uh, a solution to it that risks the imagination of a new kind of possibility maybe what has he done wait, wait, pause it by the, like, now you can that hear. needs to be a drop now here's the thing you could hear him shuffling papers as he was saying. Now, maybe that's Chuck, uh, Chuck Todd, but you, he takes a pause. There's no doubt in my mind. He's looking down. Go backwards because that's the phrase that they workshopped and they came up with that's going to explain his candidacy. It's going to it's it's his. This is exactly the words I can. I will. I will never know. So I will make this bet. There is no doubt in my mind that Burton comes in and says, you need your audacity of hope. <laughs> and here it is. He just he wants to continue to serve in terms of what his big idea is. It's that politics is broken and maybe we need uh, a solution to it that risks the imagination of a new kind of possibility. Maybe <laughs> what has he done? He risks the imagination of a new kind of possibility. And this is the way that it goes. No, no, no. In fact, I, like I, I, I amend my, I amend it. He, Burton did not come up with this because it's too wordy. Schultz came up yeah. with it and yeah, said, yeah. Schultz has been because Burton said, you need your audacity of hope. And, and Schultz goes, I have it. <laughs> we need to risk the imagine. What is it? Risk? Risk the imagination of a new type of possibility. We need to risk the imagination of a new type of policy, uh, of a possibility. And let me do my impersonation of, of Bill Burton when he says that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, say say that one more time to me again. Yeah, cause, cause, I just want to make sure I memorize it before oh, I go and meet the great. press. Because that and, really, you're really saying something there, man. Oh no, definitely no. We that's exactly right. You're the new Obama. No, that's exactly it. We need to risk the imagination of a new type of possibility. You're Obama with job experience. Oh my God. You're Obama with Home business run. You're the Obama Home that run. did build that. Yeah, you're. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I know why Starbucks is so huge. Wow, wow. That is really God. How bad. I don't understand. I mean, that's amazing. Like, because all of these other guys, you know, but actually, um, who was the other really sleazy Obama guy? Uh, Messina. He consulted for the Tories. Mm. So he's an ultra sleazy Obama guy. But, yeah. but all the other theory. Obama people, at least, like, I mean, they stuck around the sort of orbit you'd expect them to stick around. And uh, But Burton is head of, uh, I think it's SDK Knickerbocker of California, which is a pretty oh, prominent Democratic yep. consulting firm. So he's not even like... Some of these like grifts in the past, I feel like are kind of like consultants sort of like past their prime and they're like, ooh, maybe I can kind of exploit some right. it's not like gullible rich person. But like Burton, for, I mean, first of all, he won up win a presidential race and he's still in the game. So, I mean, well, the, anyways, to give the you a check sense, must be amazing. You a sense of the size like, of cash. such good money to be I made, mean, which really, honestly, Howard, I'd like to talk to you about how to approach people on Patreon. I'd like to talk to you about how to use uh, YouTube. I think that there's a lot of people who would be amenable to a progressive socialist case for radical debt uh, reduction. Let's talk about it. Oh, my God. It. Did you see what AOC uh, tweeted backslash about him? She said, uh, why don't people ever tell billionaires who want to run for president that they need to work their way up or that maybe they should start with city council first? Hmm. Mm, there you go.